Harry and Meghan mania hit Melbourne today with thousands more people turning out to see the royal couple than in Cindy as their successful Australian tour continues. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex were treated to an authentic Aussie day with a lunch of delicacies including char-grilled kangaroo and barramundi before a trip on the city's famous tram to the beach. But in typical British style they kept their coats and shoes on while walking hand in hand across the sand of South Melbourne Beach where they met crowds of children with hugs and high fives before speaking to lifeguards. The royal couple have taken Australia by storm as they started their historic first international tour together also taking in New Zealand, Fiji and Tonga over the next 16 days. Hours after arriving they announced they are having a royal baby next year, having told the Queen and other royals at Princess Eugenie's Windsor Castle wedding last Friday. Crowds waiting to see Harry and Meghan are growing every day, already far larger than those seen in Sydney two days ago with some in Melbourne reserving their spot as early as 4 a.m. At their first engagement today they were received at Government House for a reception where they played games with young people. Meghan, who was wearing an Australian-designed Dion Lee dress and camel-coloured Martin Grant trench coat, later tried Aussie rules in the garden and then changed into a Navy Club Moncow dress and Rothy's shoes made from recycled water bottles for her trip to the beach. Lunch followed at Fitzroy's Charcoal Lane which offers Aboriginal youths employment, which would have thrilled foodie Megan. A visit to Albert Park Primary School followed where young students then took them by tram to South Melbourne Beach for a plastic clean-up. The couple have asked to take part in some of Australia's environmental activities, especially related to reducing plastic use, and Megan told the children, it's amazing what you guys are doing while Harry questioned whether people really need to use straws at all, and if they do to use bamboo or metal straws. Meghan and Harry are carrying out 76 engagements in 16 days on their first international royal tour of Australasia and the South Pacific. Yesterday Meghan, 37, admitted that she is a bit tired and running on adrenaline but loving her new life. The couple have sparked a whirlwind by announcing they are having their first child just hours after touching down in Sydney and huge crowds are turning out to see them some of whom arrive in the middle of the night. Many were carrying flowers and signs including two witty notices reading, worth the detention and saying they had skipped work to be there. One little girl even gave Meghan the tiara she was wearing and a teenager who received a hug from Prince Harry just burst into tears during a walkabout ahead of the reception at Government House in Melbourne. After a school visit the couple headed to Melbourne's famous South Beach. On their journey Charlie Wolfe, a 12-year-old student from Middle Park Primary School asked if the couple had any names for their baby. Megan replied, We've been given a long list of names from everyone, we're going to sit down and have a look at them. He added, If you didn't know who he was you would just think he's a good Aussie bloke. But he admitted if Australia should have a British royal family and replied, Probably not, but they can come and visit any time they like. Megan who had changed into a Navy Club Moncow dress and, appropriately, vegan Rothy's shoes made from recycled water bottles, from her navy blue heels for black flats and a matching dress, caught one of Melbourne's iconic trams with Harry. They visited South Melbourne Beach, where they joined volunteers and schoolchildren from the local beach patrol program, who keep the local beaches litter-free and reduce the impact on the marine environment. The youngsters attend nearby Albert Park Primary and Albert Park College. The children showed them bags full of plastic cups, bottles and straws they had collected, which are then analyzed for environmental impact. Speaking to Albert Park College student, Ashley Soja, 14, Harry said, There is literally plastic everywhere. And, you know, microplastics are a real problem, especially the microplastics from fast fashion. Did you know that's one of the biggest culprits? Bonnie Shepard, 15, another Albert Park College student, said, Megan was really interested in the effect of microplastics. I told her that there are more microplastics in the ocean than stars in the Milky Way, which she was surprised by. It's amazing what you guys are doing, said Megan. Well done, you're doing a really great job. Keep it up. Carlo Foster, 12. An Albert Park primary pupil, showed Harry and Meghan bags full of plastic cups, 
beakers and bottles he has collected. Harry said, another worrying thing I'm hearing is some people trying to claim things like these are actually habitats for fish and turtles. Don't ever let anyone convince you of that. The couple also spoke to Melise and Box, 14, from Albert Park College, who had a bag filled with plastic straws. She said, Harry told us to spread the message about whether people really need to use straws at all, and if they do, to use bamboo or metal straws. Harry and Meghan then did a mini walkabout, greeting dozens of excited schoolchildren who had lined up on the beach to meet them. Among them was Amelia Markham, 12, from St. Kilda Primary School, I gave Meghan flowers, a picture of her and Harry I had drawn for them and some t-shirts for the baby. She said she loved them. Before leaving the beach, the couple strolled hand in hand down to the shoreline, to meet a group of lifeguards from Australia Surf Lifeguards. Sebastian Top, 20, a lifeguard for more than four years, asked Megan, Are you going to swim today? Maybe not today, she laughed. Harry pointed to a group of around 30 people who had waded into the sea from the beach to get a better view of them. If we try and swim, I think they might be a bit of a hazard. Showing they're not afraid to get their hands dirty, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle will help local school children pick up litter from South Melbourne Beach. Changing into a pair of Rothy's flats and a matching black Nigelina dress, Meghan and her husband made their way onto Melbourne's iconic mode of transport, along with student leaders at a local school. Arriving at the beach, the couple were fortunate to be greeted not only by roaring crowds, but also a bit of sunshine. Earlier, Despite the royal couple arriving 20 minutes late for their first engagement of the day, the crowd of around 5,000 showed no sign of dampening their enthusiasm, gripped by Megmania. They are accustomed to luxury cars and private planes. But Meghan and Harry appeared completely at ease as they took a tram to the beach with a group of excited schoolchildren. While the journey lasted less than five minutes, the youngsters managed to get in some pressing questions. Ella Burns a 12-year-old pupil from Albert Park Primary School added, she said that she hadn't thought of one as it was still quite early. Meghan was also asked by Ella what she liked doing in her spare time. The Duchess replied that she didn't have much spare time but when she does, she enjoys relaxing and watching TV shows. She faltered when asked what her favorite show was, and replied, there's heaps, I can't think of a specific one. Meanwhile Lola Mayorinese, 12, from Middle Park Primary School, sat near Harry. He asked what job she wanted to do, and she replied that she wanted to be a teacher. Harry told her, there is always going to be one bad teacher that you remember, we need more good teachers. The Duchess of Sussex has been given plenty of flowers since she arrived in Australia. But today she was given her first tiara. It was presented by six-year-old Danny a pupil at Albert Park Primary School in Melbourne. Annie was one of 600 cheering children who greeted the Duke and Duchess as they came to see how the school is cutting waste and growing vegetables as part of a sustainability program. Harry spotted Danny, who was holding a bunch of flowers as well as a toy tiara, and knelt down and said, Lily of the Valley, is that right? Then, gesturing to Meghan, he said, are they for her? The Duchess who was wearing a dress by Club Monaco, came over and said, Oh my goodness, thank you. Those are amazing. The couple met the school's waste warriors, dressed up in cape and masks, and met some sustainability leaders who showed them their nude food lunch boxes, without any plastic wrapping. At the school wormery the Duke was invited to name their pet snail. Speedy? He suggested. At the vegetable patch, which included marigolds, Peas, lettuce and alfalfa, Emma Cafferkey and Finn McLennigan, both 12, showed them how to mulch. The mulch is made out of sugar that has been shredded. You have to remember with the mulch not to put it on top of the plant. After they left he said, they said we were very well educated and that we knew a lot about this kind of stuff. As they left, one little boy told Harry, you remind me of my uncle. The Duke replied, is that a good thing? Is it because I've got a ginger beard? Foodie Megan was in her element as she and Harry enjoyed a taste of Australia at Charcoal Lane, a social enterprise restaurant in Melbourne's trendy Fitzroy suburb. At a private lunch, 
The royal couple enjoyed a shared entree of mushroom and quinoa nest and char-grilled kangaroo and main courses of wild boar, saffron risotto and barramundi. It was prepared by young chefs being trained by the Mission Australia program, which assists young indigenous Australians into employment, in many cases giving them a fresh start in life. Before the meal, they visited the kitchen, where executive chef Greg Hampton told the Duke and Duchess, Welcome, we are so happy to have you here. Gesturing at the sparkling surfaces, Harry said, You've got a very clean kitchen, is it always this clean? Especially clean today? Megan slipped off her Martin Grant trench coat in the warm room before Greg talked the couple through an array of unusual herbs and aromatic spices, getting them to smell and taste them. A lot of these ingredients have been here for thousands of years. Our fruits are the same as fruits thousands of years ago, he explained. Showing them a finger lime, he squeezed out the fleshy contents, explaining, it comes out like caviar. Oh my goodness, that's incredible said the Duchess. But he warned the couple that the Tasmanian pepper came with a kick, adding, I don't want to freak you out. Speaking ahead of their arrival, he had said, I would hesitate to offer her, the pregnant Duchess, the pepper, because they are quite hot. The first time I tasted one I thought I was having an allergic reaction because the heat creeps up on you. I don't want to freak her out. Crushing a leaf of strawberry gum, a type of eucalyptus, he encouraged the royal visitors to smell it. Is that what koalas eat in the bush? asked the duke. Yes, but we can't eat it in the same way, replied Greg, explaining how oils from the plant are used to flavor marinades, fish dishes and even ice cream. The couple were presented with charcoal lane aprons for the touch, taste and smell experience, but did not wear them. Speaking ahead of the royal visit, Greg said, we are here to support young Aboriginal people into the workforce, with a view that when they leave this place, there is going to be long-term employment for them, he said. I'm not going to turn everyone that comes here into a chef, but if they leave here with a work ethic, it's a win for us. Charco Lane currently employs 23 young people for 15 hours a week as they work towards a certificate too in hospitality. A lot of them come from backgrounds where nobody has worked, so this is very important for them," said Greg. Program manager Troy Crellin said that in 10 years, the organization had helped some 250 Aboriginal and Torres Strait Highlanders into work. The Duke and Duchess's visit to the restaurant began after they admired a mural outside created by Gunai and War Adri man Robert Young to honor the building and the area's indigenous heritage. He told Harry and Meghan how his celebration dreaming artwork references Aboriginal identity, connections and culture in Inner Melbourne Fitzroy. Before heading into the kitchen, they received a welcome to country delivered by Wurundjeri elder Uncle Colin Hunter. Mission Australia CEO, James Toomey said, It was such a fantastic and humbling surprise to hear that Mission Australia's restaurant, Charcoal Lane was chosen to welcome the Duke and Duchess for a tour hands-on cooking session and lunch. It is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for the students to meet their royal highnesses. Not too many young people can say they've met and served royalty. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex were introduced to some of Melbourne's brightest and most innovative young people at a reception hosted by the Governor of Victoria, their first event of the day. The couple arrived at Government House for a Young Victorians Leaders reception approximately 25 minutes late after being stuck in traffic earlier that morning. But Harry and Meghan got straight to work when they were greeted by the Governor of Victoria, Linda Dessau, and her husband Anthony QC, who took them inside for a private meeting. Ten minutes later the couple re-emerged and were escorted across Government Houses West where they were able to see a display put on by Victoria's This Girl Can Empowerment campaign, which encourages everyday women to get active however, wherever and whenever they want without being judged. The couple were presented with a display of 150 women showcasing a number of activities, including netball, yoga, boxer size, cricket, cycling and zoom. Megan appeared to enjoy the fitness display, which was accompanied by high-energy soundtrack by DJ Yo Mafia, and was even convinced to throw an Australian football league game ball. I'm not sure I will be good, she nervously laughed as she delicately threw the ball to one of the women. 
I'm not sure I did it right. Gerald Richter, CEO of Vic Health who showed the Duchess around the event, said, she was really impressed by the diversity of activity we had here today, and especially the sense of camaraderie between the women. She did pass an AFL football. She did a handball. That's a pretty incredible thing for anybody to do. She had not seen an AFL football before Howard, the governor's husband, explained to her what it was like, the weight of it is a little bit different, and that you handball it, you don't pass it. Sabra Nyala, 20, a student teacher and this girl can ambassador originally from South Sudan, also spoke to the Duchess. She was talking about how she loved the whole vibe of this girl can. She enjoyed being around women who want to make a change. She described her as a role model and added, she was really engaged. She has done a lot of work in the background with women's empowerment and it was good to see her coming along and seeing people in local communities making a change. After walking around the presentation, the couple, who had spit up to view different areas of the display, reunited to walk inside government house to meet young people involved in a number of innovative and entrepreneurial programs developed by young people in the Victoria region. First up was the Man Cave, a preventative mental health program for teenage boys, which was founded by Queen's young leader Hunter Johnson. There's a familiar face, Meghan said as she reached out to shake the CEO's hand. Harry also made a beeline to greet Johnson, who quickly thanked the Duke for his support. The conversation quickly turned to Harry's speech in Dubbo on Wednesday, where he delivered an emotional message to Australian farmers and opened up about depression and mental health issues. So many young much are suffering from these problems without even realizing, Harry remarked. Also representing Man Cave was 14-year-old Rupert Grant, a student from Melbourne Grammar School who had been involved with Man Cave program through his school after experiencing a tough time in school. After explaining how the program had made an impact on life for him and his friends, Meghan remarked, You are quite the spokesman. We really need more global leaders like Harry, Johnson later shared. There is a change happening amongst men now, a focus on healthy masculinity and having his support is a real badge of honor. I thanked Harry for his role modeling and leadership, and we spoke about his incredible words in Dubbo. When I said that the Duchess looked up him proudly, it's important that as men we address these issues, that we're not afraid to take the mask off and open up. To have started that conversation in Dubbo yesterday was powerful. He's a positive, glass-half-full person and has an incredible influence on the younger generation. He is the right role model for young men and boys today. After meeting the team from Man Cave, the Duke and Duchess moved on to learn more about Albit, a robot that can help hospitalized children continue to attend school and the disabled attend work. This is amazing, Meghan commented as she waved a hand in front of one of the robots named after its founder and CEO Marita Chang. Harry seemed particularly interested in their next presentation, a vertical, edible farm designed to grow inside Melbourne cafes, restaurants and, one day, people's homes. It will be interesting to see one day how this challenges the supermarkets if people are growing these in their homes, Prince Harry said of Farmwell, which was co-founded by Melbourne-based Hare Tendrix. But I hope that these can be produced with farmers in mind too, so they can exist side by side. Added Megan, I like that there is a focus on nutrients. I can see you have the sprouts, the microgreens. It's very clever. The couple's final presentation was by the team of Trinity Grammar School, who were part of the F1 in Schools program, an international STEM competition for schools in which students design and manufacture a miniature car out of an official F1 model block. Upon seeing the miniature F1 drag strip the students had built on the stay dining room table, Harry joked, we should put one in Buckingham Palace. They were then offered to launch the two F1 race car models. However neither were expecting the loud air release from the hydraulics that launched the cars. I wasn't expecting that! exclaimed Megan, who jumped at the loud noise. Harry laughed. Following the innovation program displays, the Duke and Duchess were escorted by the governor and her husband to the main reception in the government house ballroom, where approximately 350 young people representing the future of Victoria were gathered. The guests were from a broad range of backgrounds, including students, military personnel, 
entrepreneurs, charity volunteers and farmers. You are the future of our state, brilliant, innovative and inspiring, Governor Dessau said in a welcome speech before the royal couple split up to socialize with the guests who had been grouped together. One of the first Meghan got to meet was Willow the Golden Labrador, who was representing guide dogs of Victoria. Ah, everyone knows my eggshells heal as dogs, she cooed, before kneeling down to pet the ambassador. Team members from the guide dog charity thanked the Duchess for visiting and gave her a small soft toy replica of the pooch, which she seemed very thankful for. Over the next 15 minutes, Meghan met with a number of inspiring young people including an indigenous lawyer, headspace volunteers and young bloggers focusing on a wide range of issues, including female empowerment. It's scary to open up but you realize how many people it helps, Meghan told one of the girls, who runs a blog focused on mental health. The Duchess seemed particularly interested in the work of 22-year-old Sherry Roseby, a charity volunteer and founder of Women Girl which aims to see young women and girls, regardless of their background or ethnicity, have access to knowledge and quality resources through which they can be empowered. You are really talking my language, Meghan said after hearing her story. B later commented, I am particularly focused on helping women of color as they still face so many barriers and I think the Duchess was really interested. We need to create more paths for women, and when I said you can't be, what you can't see she seemed to like that. The Duchess is a big role model to many. Harry, who had been working the opposite side of the room, meeting military personnel and volunteers at the Victoria Police Force amongst many others, rejoined his wife to move to the final part of their visit in a formal reception space at Government House. They were escorted by Premier Daniel Andrews and his wife Catherine and stopped to talk to other senior parliamentary figures including Legislative Assembly Speaker Colin Brooks, Opposition Leader Matthew Guy, and Legislative Council President Bruce Atkinson. After short chats, the couple then moved into a guest conservatory to sign the Government House Visitors Book. This has been a most inspiring afternoon, the Duchess remarked to Premier Daniel Andrews. Outside huge crowds gathered to speak to the couple and cheer them on. Once again. The couple abandoned their strict scheduling to enable them to meet as many fans as possible. One boy, who took the day off school to meet the royals, said, Everybody in Melbourne loves Harry and Meghan and all my friends will be so jealous I got to meet them. The mother-to-be was then wearing the Australian-made designer dress with a Martin Grant trench coat and beamed as she made her way through the city's royal botanic gardens. In matching navy blue heels, the Duchess looked delighted to meet young Australians and was even handed a bouquet of flowers and a teddy bear for her future baby. Among the crowd, hundreds offered flowers, teddy bears and gifts for the royal couple, with one young girl eager to tell the Duchess about her ballet. Many were carrying flowers and signs including two witty notices reading, Worth the Detention and the Fresh Prince with Red Hair. Eighty-year-old Dries Brad begged his mum Naomi to allow him to take the day off school, going so far to make a flag bearing the colours of the the county of Sussex. Rhys said, I wanted to come here so badly but my mum said I had to go to school. My dad is from Yorkshire in England and I really love Harry and Meghan so after I promised to make a flag to give to them my mum said she would take me. Harry told the schoolboy his creation was cool and thanked him for coming to meet him. Prince Harry also brought a teenage girl to tears, after 19-year-old university student India Brown told him she had admired him for years. She stole a hug from the prince, despite knowing it was against protocol. The teenager was overwhelmed when Prince Harry hugged her after spotting her sign, which read, Been here since 4 a.m., loved you since I was 8. The Duchess of Sussex mastered the art of the quick change on Thursday when she swapped a custom designer dress for an affordable high street number, marking the first of two outfit changes in a matter of hours. Meghan, who is pregnant with her first child, arrived in Melbourne wearing a smartly tailored navy dress by Australian label Dion Lee, before slipping off her coat, and changing into a black button club Monaco dress to hit the beach with Prince Harry on the third day of the royal tour. The Duchess, 37, paired her first outfit, by Dion Lee with £556, 928 Australian dollars, 
Manolo Blahnik BB Navy Stilettos, a 1,510 pounds, 2,650 Australian dollars, Gucci Sovi chain bag, and the same Martin Grant trench coat she wore earlier this week in Sydney. She later swapped the blue number for a black Miguelina dress by American brand Club Monaco, and slipped into her favorite Rothy's black pumps. At 325 pounds, 268 Australian dollars, the Club Monaco dress is among the cheaper items that Meghan has worn on the Pacific tour so far, and she promptly crashed the Club Monaco site. Proving that the Meghan effect is alive and well, her outfit also crashed the Dion Lee website after the folded sail dress from the pre-fall 19 collection became available for pre-order online at Thursday lunchtime, local time. The dress was custom-made for Meghan Markle and will now go into production in the Resort 2019 collection, a spokesperson from Dion Lee told Daily Mail Australia. It will drop into store in January 2019. The dress is called the folded sail dress and retails for $1,290 RRP. Pre-order of the style will be available on www.dianlee.com from this afternoon. The Duchess Rothy's shoes, made from recycled bottles once destined for landfill, have already proven a hit on the trip, after she wore them following her visit to Taranga Zoo on Thursday. Dion Lee is one of the most critically lauded and awarded designers to emerge from Australia in recent times. Boasting celebrity fans including Chrissy Teigen, Cara Delevingne, Gigi Hadid and other young starlets, the Duchess is just the latest high-profile woman to wear the 30-year-old's designs. Meghan added a gold cuff bracelet worn previously for Her Majesty's 92nd birthday concert, by British label, Sean Lean. She also wore her favorite Martin Grant Resort SS19 beige trench coat, which retails for $2,260. Day three of the royal tour was as busy as ever. The couple began with a short walk to Government House, meeting members of the public along the way, before attending an official reception there with a diverse group of young Victorian leaders and community members. A demonstration of various sporting activities took place in the grounds with ambassadors from the This Girl Can campaign attending. Following the reception, the Duke and Duchess visited a social enterprise cafe which offers leadership, mentoring and training programs for young Aboriginal people. At the beach, they joined volunteers and school children from the local beach patrol group. They also enjoyed a lunch of native cuisine at Melbourne's Charcoal Lane including an entree of mushroom and quinoa nest and char-grilled kangaroo and main courses of wild boar, saffron risotto and barramundi. Prince Harry has been spotted wearing a new black metallic ring on the royal tour, prompting widespread social media speculation over its origins. The Duke of Sussex, known for wearing jewelry with sentimental meaning, has sported the chunky black band on his right ring finger on the first three days of outings in Australia. Some fans questioned whether the sleek piece of jewelry was a gift from the Duchess of Sussex to mark their pregnancy announcement, others suggested it might be linked to the upcoming 2018 Cindy Invictus Games. However it has now been revealed that the ring is in fact a state-of-the-art titanium sleep and activity tracker, described online as the world's most advanced wearable technology. The 275 pounds, AUD $510. Ring is from Finland-based company Aura Health, according to People. It is available to buy in the U.S. for $219. It works by taking constant readings of body temperature, heart rate and movement and feeds back to a smartphone app that allows the wearer to see the results. Prince Harry is wearing the titanium ring in the Heritage design, one of two available on the website. The prince owns a number of pieces of jewelry, including his platinum wedding band. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex also gave one of the earliest indications of their relationship by wearing matching beaded blue bracelets. Harry was not wearing the activity tracker at his last public outing before leaving for Australia, the wedding of his cousin Princess Eugenie last Friday. Neither did he wear it when he joined Meghan on their first joint visit to Sussex on October 3. The ring would help the prince keep track of his sleep following the long-haul flight to Australia and the busy schedule on their Australian and Pacific tour, when they will enter several different time zones. 
or it could be tracking his sleep pattern in preparation for the upcoming arrival of his first child. Kensington Palace declined to comment on the ring when contacted by Mail Online. The couple announced they were expecting their first child just hours after landing in Australia on Monday. After a brief visit to Dubbo on Wednesday, the royal couple visited Melbourne on Thursday and will then fly back to Sydney and Fraser Island off the Queensland coast. The second week of their trip will see the couple fly to Fiji, Tonga and New Zealand before flying back to the UK on October 31st. In the early days of their courtship, Meghan inadvertently dropped a hint about her relationship with Harry by posting a photo in which she was wearing a blue and white bracelet identical to one sported by the royal. A young woman has cried tears of happiness after she snared a hug with Prince Harry during his whirlwind visit to Melbourne. University student India Brown, 19, was among the thousands of royal fans in the Royal Botanic Gardens hoping to get a glimpse of the prince, whom she has been in love with since she was eight years old. The lucky girl became the envy of the crowd when Prince Harry stopped and accepted her offer for a hug over the barricade. Overcome with shock that he agreed, the keen polo player immediately burst into tears. He is someone I have looked up to for many many years, Ems Brown told reporters. Everything he stands for is amazing. I've loved that family since I was eight and I've followed them around the world. The teen from country Victoria had been waiting at the Royal Botanic Gardens in the rain with her best friend Molly since 4 a.m. She caught the eye of the prince with her handwritten sign explaining how long she had been waiting to meet him. Been here since 4 a.m., loved you since I was eight, her sign read. She told the prince she knew the hug was against protocol. He just said, you are going to get me into trouble, Ems Brown said. It was just such an opportunity and I just went for it. I didn't expect it to happen because it's actually against protocol. He reciprocated the hug too. It was awesome. Ems Brown rated the hug as the best ever. Earlier in the morning, the self-confessed monarchist told the ABC she was a big supporter of the prince and his wife Meghan Markle. There's no reason why we shouldn't be here today, she said. I've always had a rich passion for everything the royals stand for. Her friend Molly added, it's going to be a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. It was the second time Ems Brown has met Prince Harry after she first met him at Royal Ascot in 2014. He's such a cool human being, Ems Brown said. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex are in Melbourne as part of their marathon 16-day tour of Australia. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex have taken time to chat with a thrilled five-year-old girl while greeting royal fans in Melbourne. On their way to Government House, the couple was met by thousands of eager fans in the Royal Botanic Gardens, shaking hands and accepting gifts for their unborn child. But one tiny voice caught the attention of Prince Harry, who squatted against the barricades to greet its owner. Five-year-old Mia was waiting with her family for a chance to say hello, and dressed in a Disney princess outfit with her hair in pigtails, took her chance. She came all the way to see you the prince said to his pregnant wife, waving her over to the young girl. Mia handed Meghan Markle a bouquet of pink flowers before a family member, possibly her mother, prompted her to start a conversation. Did you want to tell her you do ballet? Remember? She told Mia. I do ballet and it keeps me really busy, the young Mia appeared to tell Meghan, who responded, that's good, do you love all of it? Mia responded shyly with a yes before Meghan broke out into a broad smile. The royal mum-to-be then asked for her name and shook the girl's hand, appreciating the confidence of the five-year-old. The Duchess, who was given the childhood nickname of Flower by her mother, had eagerly taken all the floral gifts during the ongoing tour. While not a ballerina, Meghan enjoys yoga, even having mats delivered to Admiralty House where the royal couple were staying in Sydney. Yoga is my thing. My mom is a yoga instructor, and I started doing mommy and me yoga with her when I was seven, the 37-year-old told Best Health magazine in 2016. I was very resistant as a kid, but she said, Flower, you will find your practice, just give it time. In college, I started doing it more regularly. <laughs> I'm <laughs> not
Yeah. <laughs>